Hey there, I'm Shauna. I'm from the Yoga Center Winnipeg, and this is Yoga Snacks, nourishment for your mind and body. Um, okay, so here we are sitting on a chair. We're gonna start with a centering. Um, so just take a moment, make sure you're comfortable. Uh, you're sitting either on a chair or on the floor. If you're on the floor, maybe cross-legged. In a chair, knees over ankles, feet pointing straight ahead. And if possible, a little bit away from the back of the chair. Close your eyes and start to bring your attention inward. Let's today start by feeling the breath. So if it's helpful for you, put one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. Noticing how the body moves with the breath. You might feel that the chest rises and falls or the belly expands and contracts. As much as possible, shift your breathing so that it's in and out through the nose. And then if you like, open your eyes. Rest your hands onto your lap for now. Let's take three deep breaths. So inhale. And as you exhale, sigh the breath out your mouth. And we'll do that again. Inhale. Exhale. And one third time. Okay, great. And let's do a few shoulder circles. Circle the shoulders back, forwards. You can do a little elbow swimming, a little bit back. And then even give your arms a little shake out. And take your hands beside you. As you inhale, palms face one another. Bring your hands up towards the ceiling. And as you reach your arms up towards the ceiling, just notice if it's tight in the shoulders, maybe taking the hands further apart would be helpful. If it's not so tight in the shoulders, bring the hands in line, reach up through the fingers. And as you exhale, bend your right arm and bring your right hand so that it comes behind your head if it'll reach. Take your left hand and bring it onto the right elbow and then lift up and Sometimes it helps to make like a little frame with the arms around the head. Other times you can't get the arms past the head, so don't worry too much. Sometimes the hair gets in the way. Um, and just feel that stretch and breathe. And then we're going to take the arms up, both arms stretching up. And as you exhale, bend your left elbow and bring your left hand onto your upper back or towards your upper back. Your right hand holds the elbow and just maybe bring that elbow in a little bit closer to your head if it's possible. And breathe and feel. Nice. And then release your arms and bring the arms out at shoulder height into a shape called cactus and do your best to have the arms even. Seems like my arms are never exactly even so as I say doing your best and then move the elbows back and feel what happens into the upper back and the shoulders. Feel your breathing and then let's start to bring the elbows forward and as you bring the elbows forward you could squeeze the forearms together bring the hands together or if it feels okay, tuck your right arm under your left and start to bring your left arm towards your right shoulder. Then bring the arms back, maybe back into this middle position and take your left hand and bring it towards your right shoulder. That's not correct, actually. That's the, <laughs> that is the right elbow coming towards the left shoulder. 
I should let you know that left and right are not my friends. Um, we're going to now take the arms and give ourselves a big hug, left arm on top of right, and say, it's OK that you don't know left and right. Just rock the elbows back and forth. Good. And then release that, and we'll give ourselves a big hug with the other arm on top. Maybe a pat on the back. You're doing a good job. Maybe really big hug, like you're seeing a friend you haven't seen in a long time, which you are yourself. Good. And then release. Okay. Let's do a little bit of stuff with the legs. So pick up your right leg, and as you inhale, straighten your right leg. As you exhale, bend your right leg. And straighten and bend, and when you straighten the right leg, point the toes on the way up, and as you bend, flex the foot so that you're getting some circulation and movement into your ankle joint, your knee joint. Next time your leg is straight, circle the ankle, both directions. Wiggle the toes. And then we're going to take the right leg and pick it up. And if you can hold it, you can rock it a little bit from side to side and then place your right ankle onto your left thigh. So if that's not available to you today, you can have your foot resting on the floor just with the knee open. That's totally great too. Here, when you're sitting, put your right hand onto your right knee and apply just a very gentle and loving pressure. So not trying to hurt ourselves, not trying to force anything, but at the same time, helping this hip to open. And then we're going to start to fold forward. So you might stop here and rest with your forearms onto the leg. Or if it feels OK to continue forward, you can release forward and take a couple breaths. And bring your hands up onto your thigh. Look forward, and as you inhale, sit up. So keeping the leg like this, one more thing. We'll do a little twist. Put the left hand against the right leg and the right hand behind you, twisting towards the right side. Notice where your head is. And I always like to think of the head as a metaphor for what's going on in the mind. And so sometimes the body is doing one thing and the head is way off. Um, and that's pretty typical for us humans. So just bring your head back in line with the rest of your body. Turn gently to look to the right. And then inhale and come out of that twist. Place your right foot down onto the floor and take a moment just to breathe and feel what this is all like. And then let's try the other side. So hold the left leg, start by straightening and then bending, pointing on the way up and then as the leg comes up, flex, repeat. Next time the leg is up, circle the ankle, wiggle the toes, and then rocking the leg. And just, if it's possible, the knee in one hand, the foot in the other. Then you can place your right, your left ankle on your right thigh. Check that the foot is pointing straight ahead. Apply a little gentle pressure. And then let's come on to the forearm, start to go forward. Maybe that's enough for you today, or if it feels OK, continue to release all the way forward. Let the head release. To come up, place the hands onto the leg. Inhale, look forward, and then uh, still inhaling, sit all the way up. Okay, and then let's finish that side with a twist. So 
right hand onto left knee, left hand coming behind. Maybe a little twist. Remember, what's my head doing? Line your head up with your spine and create a gentle twist. And inhaling to come out, step the foot down, pause to feel both sides. And let's finish our chair work by releasing forward. There, allow yourself to just hang forward onto the legs. If that feels like too much today, stay up onto the elbows. Or continue resting, allowing the muscles of the neck to relax, the muscles of the back to broaden. Notice where you feel the stretch. Notice where you feel your breathing. Okay, and then put your hands onto your thighs. Look forward. Use your inhale to sit all the way up. Fabulous. And then come to stand. Okay, so we're going to take the chair and have the chair beside us uh, for some balancing pose. So if you don't need the chair, you don't need the chair, but if you feel a little bit um, uncertain or unsteady, then uh, you've got your chair for your hand. So we're going to first stand in Tadasana, and so let's take a moment to find our standing. And the toes can spread while it's balanced onto the two feet. Maybe we'll do that thing where we rock around a little bit, circle left and right, forward and back. And then lining your hips over your heels, your shoulders over your hips, center of the ears over the shoulders, just come to stand. Just notice that even standing, we're balancing, reaching up through the crown. Feeling your breath. Okay, so let's keep the left leg steady. Bend the right knee. And start by coming up onto the toes of the right foot. Just see what that's like. Focus your eyes on a point in front of you. And then start to pick up your right leg. Dun, 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 dun. Remember, the chair is there if you need it. And then place your right foot down. Take a moment, both feet on the floor. Notice all those little inner voices, what's going on in that crazy mind. Bring the weight into the right foot, and then eyes focus on a point in front of you. Bend your left knee, start to just rest onto your toes. And maybe that's it for today. Well, if it feels steady, lifting from your thigh, pick the foot up off of the floor a little bit or a lot. Hands can stay on the hips. Nice. And then put your foot down. Stand. Just feel what it's like to stand with two feet on the ground. Feel what your breath is like. What's going on in the mind. Okay, so we're going to make it a little bit more fancy. Tree pose. So let's start with, I think they call this one uh, shrub. So you've got your right foot on your left. Your knees turned out, hands to the heart. So this to me is actually every bit as challenging as when you take your leg up, but just feel what it's like. Notice what your, um, what's happening in your body, what's also happening in the little inner storyline about balancing and your thoughts and your feelings there. 
Just don't believe it, but just notice it. That's part of yoga too. And then we'll change the sides. So the right foot is resting on the floor. The left foot is going to step over. And you've got your heel on your foot. Hands can come into prayer. And check in on this side. What's happening in the body? What's happening in the mind? And then put the left foot down. Stand. Okay, so we're going to take this into a little bit of a, a higher tree. So remember, you can always go back to shrub. Keep your foot on the floor. Otherwise, you're going to bring your right leg up somewhere along your left leg. Maybe your calf, or some people might be able to take it all the way up to the thigh. Remember, you've got a chair to hang on to or you can bring your hands to your heart standing leg very steady hands can stay at the heart if it's windy well if you're wobbling remember it's windy trees blow around a lot if you feel steady take your arms up spread your branches maybe smile oh, it's windy in the studio today great and then to come down, consciously step your foot down, bring your hands to your heart, or maybe just down to your side. And take a moment, stand, close your eyes, feel inward. Sigh the breath out if it would help. Just rest. Okay, other side. So remember, you can keep your toes on the floor. You can hold your chair. Or you can tuck your leg anywhere along that leg, even the knee. Foot into the thigh, thigh back into the foot to create a stable uh, connection. Hands can come to the heart or you're holding your chair. If you feel steady and you know it, take your arms up. Spread your branches. And then hands coming down, stepping your foot down, and just stand. Feel your breath. Okay, so let's use the chair like we did uh, last time, except I'm going to turn the chair facing a different way. So I'm going to have the seat of the chair closest to me. And we'll do the same pose we did last week or last episode right foot is forward and the left foot is stepping back just a small step so the toes are pointing straight ahead bend the right knee and then from there there's a little bit of balance required bring your hands up to your hips and if you feel steady and you know it you can start to sweep your arms up reach your arms up so tiny warrior Variation of Virabhadrasana 1, the warrior. And then we're going to bring the hands down and straighten the right leg and fold forward from the hips and walk the hands towards the back edge of the chair. You can stretch your hips in the opposite direction. And then walk your hands in and bring your hands onto your hips, come up. This time we're going to do the same pose but just a little bit different. Turn your left foot out a little bit more so it's turned to the angle and then your right foot is pointing forward. This often when the back foot's turned out gives you more balance and it's more similar to the classical variation of the pose. Then bend your right knee. This time, arms open to the side, sweep your arms up, reaching up. Maybe if you feel steady, look up. Virabhadrasana 1, the warrior pose. And then release your hands down, straighten your leg, 
And again, fold forward and walk the hands forward towards the back of the chair. Maybe your hips get a little bit of a stretch. And then bring your hands to the seat closer. Inhale, come up. Step your left foot forward. Stand. Okay, so we're going to do both of those on the second side. So left foot is forward, hold the chair, take the right foot back, just a small step so that the feet can point straight ahead. You can keep your hands on the chair as you bend your left knee, then bring your hands to your hips. If that feels steady, then take your arms forward. Tiny warrior, we call it. So just a variation of the Virabhadrasana. And then straighten the leg, fold forward. If it feels okay to walk the hands towards the front or the back of the chair, do so. And then inhale and come up. So this time we're going to step the right foot back just a little bit, turn the foot out. So you've got a little bit more balance here. Back leg is your anchor. Bend your front knee, hands on the hips, arms to the side, and then they can sweep up. And if you feel steady and you know it, look up. Feel your own warrior strength. Arr. And then from here, straighten the left leg, bring your hands down to your heart. Fold forward, hand onto the chair. Maybe walk the hands back. And then this time walk the hands in, come up a little bit and step your left foot back. So walk both feet back, hands are on the seat of the chair. And as you exhale, stretch your hips back to the center of the room. Then as you inhale, walk your feet towards your hands or towards the chair. Look up, inhale, come all the way up. Okay, so let's go down to the ground. We'll put the chair out of the way. Find yourself a pillow and I'm going to also have today a scarf or if you happen to have a yoga belt that would be even better but a scarf or a bathrobe tie those will both work great so let's start by lying down on your back knees bent and feet on the floor and take a moment to feel this position pillow or folded blanket under your head so that your head rests comfortably and the forehead is either neutral or slightly tilting towards the heart. Draw your right leg in and this time we're going to put a belt around the center of the right foot. And straighten the right leg, so belt or a scarf. So it's ideal if it's not too stretchy one hand holding each part of the strap and lifting up through the heel, straightening the back of the knees. So I do this pose a lot. I'm pretty flexible in this pose. You might find that that's just a little bit too painful. So you could have your right leg at the height of your left knee. Just work wherever makes sense for you. So it's okay to create a little bit of challenge, um, but not too much. Okay, and then let's release the right leg, put the right foot down to the floor, take a moment and feel what that's like. Let's put it around the left, stretching up through the sole of the left foot, and again, wherever it works for you. So maybe it's down by the other leg, or maybe it's a little bit in line with your hip.
Okay, and then release that foot. Place your left foot down by the floor. It's time to bring the soles of the feet together and let your knees fall open. This pose is called Supta Baddha Konasana. It might even feel really great to put your hands under your head, interlace your fingers. So that's a pose you can stay in, but we're going to come out now, lift the knees, release the hands, stretch the legs out one by one. So you come into Shavasana. Palms are turning to face up. Legs are out. Sometimes it's good to give the legs a little shake just to get them to settle. And allow your body to rest into the floor. Each breath, let it feel like the body is heavy, like the muscles are relaxing. Everything is just melting, settling to the earth. Absolutely nothing to do. Let yourself be held and supported. And you're going to stay in this pose for a little bit as I sit up. Again, I might invite you to stay in the Shavasana after the show ends. Allow your body and mind to rest as long as they're able. Otherwise, if you'd like to sit up and do the closing with me, take a moment to bend your knees to roll over onto your side, use your hands to lift yourself up. If you like, join your palms. So that's the, um, often used as a symbol of uniting the bo body, mind, and spirit. But I also love to end my practice with my arms open, like a big embrace, just to recognize all the beings that we're connected to. And just with that awareness, joining me in Namaste to honor the light in me, honoring the light in you. Thank you so much for being here. See you next time.